Welcome back to TC Talk Sports, or hello for the first time. If you love NBA basketball, you have come to the right place. Soon I'll be the number one sports channel on all of YouTube, so hit that subscribe button if you want to be part of this journey. Also follow TC Talk Sports on TikTok, the link's in the bio, or you just type in TC Talk Sports on TikTok. But you must be a fan of the NBA if you clicked on this video. You know, today's team preview is the Utah Jazz. So without further ado, let's get into it. The Utah Jazz, one word to describe them, two words. Very interesting. I mean, they had a weird season last year. They have a bunch of good pieces, young pieces, I think. They were just not able to put together a full season and ended up struggling pretty bad last year. They finished 31-51. and 51. That put them 12th in the West offensively they could score the ball average 115.7 points per game that was 11th best in the league defensively that's where most of Jazz's issues came from they gave up 120.5 points per game that was second to last in the league but they were fourth in team rebounds and then on the other end the negative side they turned the ball over 15 times per game and that led the entire NBA so a bunch of ups and downs team statistic wise for the Jazz Last season, I think they'll improve really all those numbers, maybe not rebounding. Fourth is pretty high up there, but I think they'll improve offense. The defense might go up a couple rankings, but they're not going to be a great defensive team. Player-wise, we're going to start out with Lowry Markinen, definitely the best player on this Utah Jazz team last year. Played 55 games, had injuries here and there, and you could tell when this team missed him, they really missed him. But he averaged 23.2 points per game. He shot 39.9% from three. That's the second highest of his career. Brought in 8.2 rebounds as well. And fun fact, he's the only seven-footer to make 175 three-pointers in multiple seasons, which, I mean, that's a great thing to have for the Jazz. You know where the league's going. These tall guys that can handle the ball and shoot the ball. is not a great ball handler, but definitely a sharp shooter. From outside, And in the offseason, there was a lot of talks about if he's going to another team, another team's going to pick him up. He's staying in Utah. Jazz signed him to a five-year, $238 million contract in the offseason. I think that's a good move for the Jazz. He is honestly a really good NBA basketball player. He can block shots on the defensive side, grab rebounds, and shoot threes. As I mentioned, I believe the Jazz are in a rebuilding phase right now, and he is a fantastic piece to build your team around. Another valuable piece for the Jazz team is Colin Sexton. You know him from his time playing at Alabama. Last season for the Jazz, he had to step up and play a little bit of a bigger point guard role. He averaged 18.7 points per game, 4.9 assists. That was a career high for him. And he shot 39.4% from three. He's not really a great three-point shooter, but 39% last season is a good number, a good spot for him to be at. And you know he's a Tenacious defender, averaging 0.8 steals per game, a good on-ball defender. He was one of the best in college basketball a couple years ago. Hasn't been that good in the NBA, but if he's on you playing man-to-man, you're going to have some troubles getting past him. Jordan Clarkson, his name always gets thrown around for sixth man of the year. He started some games last year for the Jazz, but more than likely will be coming off the bench again. And he's just one of those guys where he just plays better off the bench. There's really no rhyme or reason to it but he is a bench player not that that's a bad thing because he's still a good player overall he averaged 17 points per game last season a career high with five assists per game that also led the team you know playing less minutes than the starters coming off the bench to lead your team in assists is crazy but that just shows what kind of player Jordan Clarkson is normally known more for his three-point shooting but last year he had a career low of 29.4 percent from beyond the arc I mean, I think that's just a mixture, combination of the team was losing games often, didn't have full regular rotations every night, so he was trying to do his best to keep the Jazz in some of those games and try to take over and win the games by himself. I think he's going to fix that problem going into this year. He'll probably shoot about 35% if I had to predict. I'll predict 35%. We'll check this video after the season, see how well I did, but a bounce back year shooting wise for Jordan Clarkson. Otherwise, he had a good year for the Jazz. John Collins, for whatever reason, is like one of my favorite players in the NBA. Just a high flying, powerful 
power forward. I loved him in Atlanta catching lobs from Trey Young. And he's doing the same thing in Utah. He's coming into his second year with the Jazz. Last year, he averaged 15 points per game, 8.5 rebounds per game, leading the team last season. And he shot 37% from three. Super athletic and run the floor extremely well. And now he's developing a three-point shot. He can also pass the ball a little bit, so he's becoming a better playmaker overall. Not the tallest forward, about 6'9", 6'10", but that athletic ability really makes John Collins who John Collins is. 37% from three. I think we're going to see that again this season. The Jazz play fast. They emphasize scoring, obviously 11th in the league last year, predicting another good year for John Collins. And he'll be playing alongside Keontae George, the second-year man out of Baylor. He averaged 13 points per game last year in his rookie season, 4.4 assists, and he shot 33% from three, which is a little bit lower than Jazz fans and NBA fans would like to see because he is a good three-point shooter. He had multiple games last season with five-plus threes. He was a very common player last season for people to bet on four-plus threes, five-plus threes, even six-plus threes. He won me a couple bucks here and there, and I'm excited to bet on him again. So Keontae, don't let us sports bettors down but going into a second year I think he had a good rookie year he's been playing summer league playing preseason he's just getting more comfortable more confident with the NBA game I think he's going to turn out to be a go from really good very good pretty good I think he's somewhere in between that pretty good and very good basketball player by the time his career is over not the best defender but you know NBA loves offense he's a good offensive player and he's only going to get better. Busy offseason for the Utah Jazz as I mentioned re-signing Lowry Markkinen to a huge contract to keep him in Utah. Jazz a couple draft picks in this year's draft. I'm not 100% sold that any of them maybe one of them will have a decent year decent career but they took Cody Williams 10th overall out of Colorado. He's 6'8", 190. Left college after one year. He was an all Pac-12 freshman team member, averaging 11.9 points per game and three rebounds per game. Statistically, he's not a guy that's going to fill up the stat sheets, but the body type, the way he plays the game, could make him into a valuable member in the NBA, whether it's with the Jazz this season in the next couple seasons or another team in the future. He's a versatile defender, can pretty much guard one through four. I think he's too small to guard centers, especially with some of the huge guys they have in the NBA now. Super athletic, can run the floor, but offensively he doesn't really have one go-to move or type of shot that he can dominate with. Uh, not the best shooter overall. Taking him with the 10th overall pick, he's 19 years old, I believe. Not a good, not a bad, geez, not a bad guy to draft and try to develop because he could be a 3 and D type of player in the NBA. The defense is already there, but definitely needs to work on a three-point shot. Not a terrible draft pick for the Jazz, but I just don't think he's going to work out well right now. With the 29th overall pick, the Utah Jazz selected Isaiah Collier out of USC. Season might have been overlooked because of the Bronny James coverage, but going into that college season, Isaiah Collier was the number one ranked prospect for that season, 6'4", 210, that's a great body to have for a point guard. He can handle the ball, he can score at the rim, shoot the three, but I don't think he had that good of a season that a lot of people expected him to have. He was being talked about as number one overall pick going into this draft last season, and throughout the year, he just slowly dropped down the draft boards, got picked 29th overall. In his one year at USC, he averaged 16 points per game, 4.3 assists, shot 49% from the field. Pac-12 all-freshman team, of course. I mean, he was he did end up having a, a good year, a solid year, but nothing absolutely crazy that people kind of expected him to have and what could have made him a lottery pick, almost dropping down to the second round. I think he'll get some minutes off the bench for Utah this season. I don't think some G League work would be bad for him. Give him a couple years to develop. He's still young, obviously, was just a freshman when he left USC. I think he could, I'll say that he has a better chance of turning into a better NBA player than Cody Williams and this other draft pick that I'm going to talk about. But again, I think it might take two, three, maybe even four years. Said Isaiah Collier, 
fell down the draft boards. This guy really fell down the draft boards. Kyle Filipowski was projected lottery pick, at least a first round pick. He was taken 32nd overall. His two seasons at Duke, I mean, if you watched or even paid a little bit of attention to college basketball, you know the name Kyle Filipowski, power forward center from Duke. In 2023, his first year at Duke, he was a second team all ACC. 2024, he was first team all ACC, and rightfully so. He was good at Duke, especially last season. I'm a UNC fan, so I don't really like Duke, and I definitely don't like Kyle Filipowski. But he had a solid year at Duke. However, I do not think he's going to be a good NBA player. He can shoot the ball. He can score. He can rebound. But I just think he's too soft to play down low in the paint. And I just think he's going to struggle shooting the three in the NBA. And that was kind of his strong suit in the college basketball world. I think he's going to get locked up by some of these other power forward type. Like, for example, if Jalen Williams from the Oklahoma City Thunder is guarding him, there's no way he's going to dribble past him when he's outside the arc. I think Williams is strong enough, athletic enough to guard him down low in the paint. But overall, I'm going to mark it down. Kyle Filipowski will not be a good NBA player. We can check back on this at the end of the season just to see how he's doing and then in a couple years to see that I was right. So a lot of draft picks for the Jazz this year, but players to watch. First, we're going with Taylor Hendricks. He's 6'9", 210. He only played 40 games last year, so casual NBA fans might not know the name, but he started a bunch of games when John Collins and Lowry Markkinen were out with injuries. He averaged 7.3 points per game, 4.6 assists, and shot 37.9% from three. I mean, he's that in-between guy. He can score down low and shoot the three. He looked comfortable shooting the three ball. He's a big body, 6'9", 210 out of the University of Central Florida. I mean, I think he's going to be a good player. He's still young. Coming into his second year now, for the Utah Jazz, and I think a solid mission accomplished rookie year for Taylor Hendricks. Nobody was talking about him going into the year, and then there were some rumblings about him towards the end of the year because he was playing well. So this year, definitely going to watch out for Taylor Hendricks. Next, this one might be a little crazy, but the Jazz signed this guy to a four-year, $12 million contract. So obviously, they want them on their team. They want him to play. It's Johnny Juzang. From UCLA, he's now going into his third year with the Utah Jazz. He's only averaged 18.6 minutes per game, 7.2 points per game, and 41.6% from three last season. He's an interesting guy, one of the best players in college basketball three, four years ago. An athletic guard slash wing type player. He can score the ball when he needs to and obviously shoot. He shot 41.6%. From three last season, as I mentioned, the contract, the money that they gave him, I think they want him to play, and they know that he can be a good NBA player. This might be a, a low-key thing that nobody's talking about, but I think Johnny Juzang is going to get minutes off the bench, especially if the guards deal with injuries or have bad games. He's a mature, confident player, playing at one of the most historic colleges in all of college basketball. I think he's ready to make an impact for this team, and I think we're going to see that this season from Johnny Juzang. Prediction time for the Utah Jazz. They are not going to make the playoffs. Um, they're going to finish low in the West once again. They were 12th last year. They might be even lower this year, just how talented the Western side is. They're definitely in a rebuild phase with these young guys like Johnny Juzang, Taylor Hendricks. They had three draft picks. They're going to want to develop all of those guys. So not a great year for the Jazz, but they have a lot of young talent, so it'll be interesting to see how good they are in the next two, three, maybe even four years. But for the 2025 season, Utah Jazz missing the playoffs, a bad record, but ultimately it might end up helping them going forward into their future.